Welcome to Identity Church Sunday Morning Message, where our sonship is revealed. Stay tuned at the end of this message to receive more information about resources available through Identity Church. Now grab your Bible, sit back, and enjoy a message from Identity Church that is already in progress. I'm not going to be in a hurry today, but my wife will probably tell me I should have been. Friday afternoon, we left about noon, and we went to my father's house in Vero Beach, and we commenced to clean up everything, declutter. Um, Six loads to the dump, two loads to Habitat of Humanity. It looks really, really good. But, you know, there has to be a team leader when you, you know, when you do that, and I figured out really, really quick, I was not in charge. Um, Hitler's baby sister, Susie, was there. Um, It's amazing. When that girl gets started on something, and, and I realized that Anyway, I'll get to the encouragement in a minute. But she, she took charge and wouldn't let me go get my dad because I wanted to show him all the stuff we were giving away. Just, and she's like, no. She overrode me and said, no. But we actually got it done. When I went and got my dad and showed him what we had done, he's very well pleased. Oh, and somebody, other family members weren't there. Yeah. But um, but here's here's the bottom line is is in the back bedroom, which used to be my mother's prayer room. And at one time she had maps on the wall, but she passed in 1997. It hasn't been cleaned since. And we started throwing away things. Pentecostal evangelical magazines and just junk, lots of junk. An old TV stand that turned into a bookcase is now firewood. <laughs> but I felt like a um, a jewelry thief because I found some old teachings of my mother. And I didn't tell Susie. I snuck them into my bag because that'd be like contraband (laughs) for what our assignment was. And I I came across an old teaching. How many are enjoying the prophetic school? Uh, Today's message is prophetic terminology. Um, And I, I came across my mom had written, handwritten from my mom, um, all these different things about it. And on the top of it, she wrote, how do I know God is speaking through me? With a big question. This is my mom's handwriting. And she writes, because it makes more sense. (laughs) And I've pondered that. You know, when God, you know God's speaking through you when it sounds better than you. When it's got seeds of life in it and you don't have life other than him, then it's, it's, it's him. And so uh, this teaching was, was given about 1993 or 4 from a little prophet by the name of Augustina Alakela. Um, Ron, let me see that mic. And, and what I, I, I prophesied over Noel and, and others, and, and you know, the prophetic school is, what do you do with a prophet, prophetic word from God when it doesn't feel like it's working out? And so, Susie, come up here, baby. We were, I don't know, our story was we weren't going to be married anymore. I met Jesus and... and, and, and you were Mr. Perfect then. Rodney said you had to be nice nice to me. Um, Here was the problem is is that 
the, the problem was is that I'd had a real encounter with God and was and was living in righteousness and 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 our marriage was still nowhere near intact. As a matter of fact, I think she wanted to get away from me. She had actually promised to come home at Christmas, but after Christmas, I'm leaving for the boys. She was coming for the boys, but I'm done. I don't want to be married to you. And meanwhile, I'm praying and 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 fasting and 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 try to do my thing for for God to help God out because he said he was going to heal our marriage and she wasn't very cooperative and so this little Hispanic prophet comes to my mom and dad's church and I went on Friday night and he calls me out and prophesies to me that I'll be a prophet to the nations and just just blows me away with this prophetic word I, I could care less about being a prophet to the nation I just want my wife back and then they had this teaching that I'm going to give today on Saturday morning. And then Saturday night, this little Hispanic prophet calls her out and starts prophesying to her. How many of you have heard me talk about her gift of faith? He called it out. And you got to realize we weren't living a good life. We were absolutely entrenched in bad stuff. How did he start the prophecy? Um, when he first started out, he said, I'm going to need to be very delicate because I guess he could just sense what a mess I was, you know. And um, basically, um, he called out um, me being a woman of faith. You know, here I was and sleeping around and doing whatever. And you know what? God's so much bigger than that, yeah. you know? And what he said to me, he said, God understands the things you've done that kept you um, from having nervous breakdowns, you know? I mean, this Listen, actually, basically what he was saying... What he was saying was that what he was saying was that your lifestyle, you, things in your lifestyle, actually kept you from having three nervous breakdowns. And I'm sitting there going, "Are you telling me that those affairs kept her from?" And don't think it's going to work for you. Just. <laughs> <laughs> Just because she could pull it off, don't you dare try that. I don't think I could do it today, but it's like a good strike today. Feel the love. But but did, but I was I was I I can still picture where he where he was at and where he called her out into the aisle and was prophesying her. I had just got a word I was a prophet to the nations the night before. And he's prophesying that she was a woman of faith. I'm like, do you know who that woman is? <laughs> yeah, he did. But, but this morning when we, I reminded her of it, she said, you know, he said, I gotta, I'm, going, I'm going to be very delicate. So this is what we're learning in the prophetic school. And that was in a season where I was so black and white prophetic that I could, call, I could, I could find your sin quicker than I could your, your, your calling. And then years later, she we heard a uh, an ex prostitute. Pre what was the title of that message? The faith of a sinful woman, and that was one that's really stuck with me. You know. So, in other words, go ahead. In other words, don't count. You don't me. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you know, there too is like how God dealt with us so differently. You know, it's like with him, you know, God is so direct with him because bullheaded, yeah. right? And that's, what God, but that's the way he has to be spoken to, you know? And with me, he was so gentle because I was always just a child who, you know, just obeyed, you know? I wasn't, um, I wasn't that type of kid who you said, don't cross this line, you know? That's him. <laughs> but that's a different how differently God dealt with us. That was in the season where um, 
God was trying to teach me here. I'm, I'm called to be a prophet, and all anything I could do is see all her corruption. And he gave me Ecclesiastes 5 one day. He says, guard your steps when you go to the house of God to draw near to listen to better. <clears throat> to listen is better than to offer the sacrifice of fools. For you do not know what they are doing that is evil. And here's what verse 2. Be not rash with your mouth, nor let your heart be hasty to utter a word before God. For God is in heaven and you are on earth, therefore let your words be few. And when I got that, he said to me, he gave me an answer because I'm sitting there trying to figure out, this prophet really knows who she is. Why didn't he call her out? Because see, I wanted full confession and repentance so I could still be in control as a husband. So he gives me that scripture and he says, listen, I'm in heaven, you're on earth, therefore let your words be few. And he says to me, he said, it ain't sin till I call it sin. Shut up. And so if we take our, our prophetic gift and, and, and we have to hear the heart of God on it because it's not sin till he calls it sin. Like she said, she tries this now, she's dead. But, you know, she got away with it then. You know, then it would be, now it would be sin. Something my mom wrote on the same thing, she says, Old Testament is 80% judgment, New Testament is 80% grace. Understanding God's prophetic terminology. Time element in the prophetic. I want to deal with the time element in the prophetic. God seems never to be in a hurry, but is always on time. God has always seemed to take longer than man thinks he should. I wrote your name next to that one. God will come through on his time. Our time is in his hands. Galatians chapter 4, verse 4. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law. First uh, Timothy chapter 2, verse 6. Who gave himself as a ransom for all, which is the testimony given at the proper time. How many get frustrated because God gives you a promise, and in the journey you quit, get mad, don't believe it? Romans 5, 6. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the unjust. Galatians 4, 2. But he, is under, he, he was under guardians and managers un, until the date set by his father. We're talking about Jesus there. And so here's the, here's the issue with the prophetic is you get a word and you'll get out in front of it. But I'm going to tell you, the, the man or the woman that will fulfill the promise of God has changed so much in the journey. Because you're going to switch from 80% judgment to 80% grace. <sighs> Acts 3, verse 21. Heaven must receive, retain, to keep the times of rest restitution, which is uh, Acts 3, 21. Whom heaven must receive until the time of restoring of all things about which God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets long ago. If you're going to operate in the prophetic, you have to understand it. God will use that to restore, to bring back into alignment. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1. For everything there is a season, a time for every matter under heaven. Ecclesiastes 3.11. He has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity into ma into man's heart yet so that he cannot find out what god has done from the beginning to the end ecclesiastes 3:11 i said in my heart god will judge the righteous and the wicked for there is a time for every matter and for every work who's in charge of your time acts 1 7 and 8 he said to them it is not for you to know times or seasons that the father has 
The Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be a witness in Jerusalem and all of Judea, Samaria, and the end of the earth. 1 Thessalonians 5.1 Now concerning the times and seasons, brothers, you have no need to have anything written to you. If you walk with God enough, you understand the times and the seasons. This week we had a New York abortion bill put in that is atrocious. Mary Ann says, oh, we need to come and pray for it. I'm going to tell you what I heard in my spirit. We should have prayed for it a long time ago. Why now? We wait until it becomes law. Now we want to act like we have the ability to change law. When we should have been praying, we should have been doing, the, the body of Christ and the church of the Lord Jesus Christ should have been working to where this shouldn't have been, been able to go in. You wait until there's a category for a hurricane off the coast of Florida before we go, you know, we should pray. No, you should have prayed when it was down at the Horn of Africa. When you could have controlled its destiny, instead of bearing down on you, now you got to have a supernatural miracle of God because you weren't willing to pray and, and rule your area. So Mary Ann, to say, yeah, we're going to pray against it. No, I'm going to repent for it. I'm going to repent that it had the ability to get into law. Is that a little bit different? In other words, quit complaining and let's start ruling. I can't believe they did that. I can't believe we allowed them to do that. Psalms 105, 17 and 18. He has sent a man ahead of them. You don't like me snotting? <laughs> he had sent a man ahead of them. Joseph, who was sold as a slave. His feet were hurt with fetters. His neck was put in a collar of iron. Listen, the word of the Lord, if you go look, go look at the scriptures, the word, the promise of God tried him. If you're going to play in the prophetic, God's going to make you promises that will absolutely break you in half so he can be God. Because if it doesn't break you in half, you'll build your own kingdom and not his. So, I mean, we want to hear the voice of God. I want to hear the voice of God better and better. How many want to hear the voice of God? But let me tell you something. Sometimes he's going to tell you to do some things that's going to put you in a pickle because he wants to pickle you. Because when someone, you know, is someone biting a cucumber or a pickle? Well, if you haven't been pickled long enough, you're just a cucumber. He wants a pickle. <laughs> Pickle a day, he'll save you. <laughs> Psalms 31, 15. My times are in your hands. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from my persecutors. Galatians 6, 9. Let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. Let me tell you something. The pressure on you is to steal the promise in you or to bring the promise forth to where you won't squander it. I'm telling you guys, ah, you, you, you go look at, you go look at uh, the Old Testament when they cross the Jordan, the Jordan represents death. They come into the promised land. When you cross the Jordan, when you bent your knee, you died to who you were and said, God, give me the promised land. There was giants in the land and God left the giants there for one reason, to teach you how to do war. I gave my life to Jesus and all hell's breaking loose. Sounds like the same program I signed up for. You know, the guy who, who's preaching Candy Andy Christianity hasn't had, had his butt kicked yet. But I'm telling you, he left the giant there to teach you to do war. How, how do you do war when you can't see out in front of you and everything? You learn to worship. You learn to fly flags. You learn to give when you don't have it because you don't know. This ain't enough to pay the bills anyway. You want me to give what? I can't pay the bills. Good. And what's the big deal? I'm still going to trust you, God. I'm going to tell you something. You break the giant's back when you just believe in God. I'm going to tell you, and he will wait you out until you actually break. That was good, wasn't it? I'm preaching to somebody today besides myself. So I'm talking about time. 
See, when mom and I sat in this class, he called me a prophet the night before. He gave me all these prophetic promises, and it didn't come as nearly as quick as I thought it was. I went home and told Susie, and then she decided to show up the next night, and she gets a word. And I'm like, okay, I'm a prophet, and she's a woman of faith. Well, it didn't look that way in my house for a while. <laughs> Listen, let me tell you something. You talking about control freak? I said to her, if you're going to live in this house, you will go to church on Sunday morning. She's like, you can't tell me what to do. If you're going to live in this house, you're going to go to church on Sunday morning. I get up Sunday morning. She gets dressed. I'm like, man, she's going to submit to my authority. She gets in her car and goes to another church. I'm like, God. He goes, you got to be a little more specific with this one. She went to church. She just didn't go with me. <laughs> so, so, so here's the frustration is I have all this prophetic promise. She gets a prophecy. She's a woman of faith, and she's a scoundrel. She's mean. Why? Because she's still dealing with the abuse and the hurt that I had done, and she didn't trust me. That's right. Ooh. I notice. I'm scared. <laughs> What's Susie? What's your famous word? Action. Oh, I heard that stuff. Though. I was so stinking tired. Actions make louder than words. What do I do to you now? Actions speak louder than words. It took about twenty years to flip that around. But it, it, it took it took a while for her to trust me. Why? She had heard words and no action. Well, let me tell you something. You get prophetic words, but you don't act accordingly either. Because you think God is a suddenly God instead of a progressive God. And if you get your prophetic timeline out, you'll actually use it against you. Give him another word outside of this one. No, this is your word, bro. I've been wanting to, pre I've been wanting to preach to you for years now. Nessie, you can pay me later, baby. <laughs> Listen. See, 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 we look at Acts chapter 2, and suddenly the Holy Spirit showed up. Well, that suddenly was suddenly. But let me tell you something. 500 went, 120 stayed. That suddenly took so long, most of the people had left. So you're looking for a suddenly, and God's looking for faithfulness. You're looking for a miracle, and God wants to see stewardship. <laughs> God, this woman, she hates me. Yeah, I know. But did you hear the prophecy? She's a woman of faith. Faith in what? The devil? She's mean. I mean, she was mean. She, she, she didn't trust me and because I had not I had lo I, I, I wasn't trustworthy up until then <laughs> but what do you do with the prophecy you're going to be a prophet to the nations and you can't get out of your own way you can't get your wife to to follow you because you haven't been going in the right direction long enough. I had to, I had to make it a determination I was going to serve God with or without her. Give her an option, opportunity and an option to follow me. But I was going to follow God. The problem is some of you are waiting for your spouse to join you because you're too chicken to follow God alone. That way you can blame your spouse instead of yourself. I'm telling you. There was a point in time where God was getting tired of her as much as I was. Because things do shift. He, I went on a 21-day fast for her. And the Lord said to me, I said, well, what am I fasting? He says, you're, you're fasting for her. I'm going to speak to her, and she'll make a choice. If she turns me down, I'll release you from the marriage. I'll tell her story. I don't know when it happened, but she said a prayer, something like this. I know you did something to that man and you 
taught him how to love me. You're going to have to do that to me. And she said, what, two or three days later, she had love for me that she didn't have. Let me tell you something. She tested me. And that tested the prophetic promises of God. But God, it, that, this doesn't look good. My dad took me for a walk one day. He said, son, can I talk to you about this? Yeah, he says, you keep saying God's going to heal your marriage. That woman doesn't like you. <laughs> that woman wants to get away from you. I know, dad. And then he said some things. And I said, you ever say that about my righteous wife? I'll never speak to you again. And he never mentioned that again. Why? You better stand on your promises. Amen. And I'm telling you, and because you've had warfare over your promises proves it's God. Amen. But the problem is, is the, 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 the one that's warring over it won't be the same one who actually receives it. We get mad at God because we think his suddenly is supposed to be today. And, and the problem is, is that you, you have to do your part. Mark chapter 4, verse 26, and he said, The kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. God plants into a person a kingdom seed, a vision, a God-inspired project or a ministry. Keep preparing, doing what you have to do with what you have now. I had to get into to, to support groups. I had to get into Bible study. Why? For my own salvation. And otherwise, I would, have, I would have broken the promises that I was serving God. People waited for me to fail. People bet on me I would fail. 20 years later, they're still shocked. They stay away from me now. But, but listen, the odds were not on my behalf because so many people make those promises and fail. The fact that we're still married is the biggest miracle you've ever seen. But the biggest frustration I had with God is he promised it and it didn't happen quickly. It didn't happen quickly. There was a time and a season not too many years ago, I blamed the failure of our ministry on her. Because she wasn't spiritual enough. You know, I'd give her a day off and she'd go to Bible study. <laughs> going to Bible study, you're not going to Bible study, that's just free time, and I know how you were. Well, what is that? That's accusation, which means I'm still unhealed. And we want God to promote that, don't we? You ding dongs. He can't promote that mentality. <sighs> you got to keep believing. You got to confess it. It will come to pass. Fight the good fight of faith. Let me tell you something. Continue moving in the right direction of the promise he gave you. I'm going to be a prophet to the nations. What does that mean? Nations, oh, okay, I'm going to go to Paraguay. I'm going to go to, no, nations is people groups. So guess what? He says to me for the first people group, I don't understand black people because I was racist. Now I'm, I have favor with African-Americans. That's the people group that I needed to get healed with. Why? Because I used to curse them. The problem why some of you won't get your promises is you won't deal with the very things you curse because that's the gateway to the promise. God says to me, I'm going to, I'm going to use you to heal your wife. The problem is I got to heal you first, knucklehead. But God, everything I do, I get choked, and she gets away with everything. I'm not working on her right now. I need you healed. I need you walking with me. Eventually, I will use you because you were the abuser to heal the one that's been abused. I don't know. I will maybe wave your magic wand. The prophet prophesied today. Now, did you hear those words now and today? See, the problem is we don't understand prophetic language. You, 
You're going to have to keep going. Listen, Noah built, Noah's boat, boat building ministry was 100 years. Yes. Moses' Ten Commandments was two years before Pharaoh. Yes. David, the Lord prophesied by Samuel as a teenager, was 30 years before he became king. Some of you got a prophetic word. You want my pulpit. I want you to clean the toilet. Right. Prophetic time terminology. God does not mean the same thing with certain words as we do. We hear now or we hear this day and we think immediately or within 24 hours, period. However, in prophetic terminology, these terms do not always mean what we, <clears throat> what we would assume they mean. Samuel prophesied judgment. Now, for now, was 38 years later. It's First Samuel chapter 13, verse 14. But now your kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought out a man after his own heart, and the Lord has commanded him to be a prince over his people because you have not kept what the Lord's commandment. He said now, and it was, well, how many, 38 years? The problem is, is you have a huge calling to operate in the government of God. If God's telling you you're going to sit in a government seat, he's got to, you, you got to wait out the old regime. In love. The reason you aren't sitting in some of it is you haven't waited out the old regime in love. You've cursed him. You've talked about about him. And you wonder why you're not sitting in your seat. You know, those religious people we all ran from. You know, those, those, never mind. That's a whole nother message. Samuel prophesied again this day in 1 Samuel 15, 28. This day was 24 years later. And Samuel said, the Lord was torn the kingdom of Israel from you this day and has given it to a neighbor of yours who is better. 24 years. When personal prophecy comes forth, it is divinely decreed and established in the spiritual heavenly realm. But it may take many years before it to be fulfilled in the natural. And that's where we fail as prophetic people. Helpful timetables based on biblical examples and the years of experience immediately is one to three years. Does this help you? Immediately, it's one to three years. Very soon, it's three to ten. Now or this day, is ten to forty. And soon, Jesus said, I'm coming back. That was 2,000 years ago. Soon, Ron, God's going to bless you. <laughs> oh, does that change the prophecy? No, it changes the man. It changes the man. And when the man changes by obedience, it goes from soon to this day to immediately to, to a suddenly. And the suddenly surprises us because we can't believe we made it. <laughs> You've had a couple of those. I'm still here. <laughs> Am I serious? <laughs> Process to, to, to believe to bring the prophetic word. Patience, <laughs> Romans chapter 5, verse 3. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance. Let me tell you something, women. There's a scripture that I just love about you. It says, let patience have her perfect work in you. It's female. <laughs> uh, let patience have your perfect work in you. Why? Because it has to be, it has to be birthed. You've got to embrace patience. When God told me he was giving me a, a new weapon of warfare, and I'm thinking a bigger sword or sharper this, a battle axe. No, I'm going to give you the gift of patience. Really? That's a gift? It's a weapon of war? Yeah, if you'll be patient, the devil will always expose himself. Then you can cut his head off. So while you think that I don't care about you, I'm being patient to see what's in you. To see if you'll jump ship because you had a promise, but you wouldn't go through the process, and therefore you're going to miss your suddenly. And when we have our suddenly, we may let you come back and have Kool-Aid with us. That sounded Jim Jones just, didn't it? That isn't really what I meant. <laughs> that isn't what I <laughs> Popsicles, that's better. 
wisdom. Romans 8, 28. And we know that these things, we, we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose. I'm telling you, if you don't stop, you'll find the, you'll find the beginning again. The thing is, is in the process and the laps around the mountain. See, the problem is, is, is my mentality is if I take a lap around the mountain, I think I started over. No, because every lap around to take the mountain, you go a little bit further higher. You never come back to the exact end. You, you're always going up to the mountain. Romans 8, 31. <clears throat> what then shall we say t- to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Let me explain it. If God can be for you, who can be against you? Everybody. And it doesn't matter. <laughs> Susie, God's going to ma- heal our marriage. I don't want our marriage. Oh, I went back and cried, God, she doesn't care. Oh, you believe her or me? <laughs> you believe her or me? But God, she don't like me no more. But I love you. Is that enough? No. <laughs> she won't. Give me the encouragement I need. Oh, she's just rude. I think she's a demonized girl. She's got to be the devil herself. Dude, she, she, listen, I created it so I can talk about it. But also God was going to, said he was going to use me to heal that. You hear about the, Church service, the devil stands up. I'm the devil, and everybody runs except one old man in the back. The devil goes, Don't you know who I am? He goes, Yep, I do. He says, Why aren't you scared? He goes, I married your sister. (laughs) 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 I was I was on wisdom here and I just fell off the truck. First Corinthians chapter four, verse five, for what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord with ourselves as your servant for Jesus sake. Second Corinthians four, 17 for this light mom, I can't even, it never feels, feels light. It, it's never a moment. It, it's, it's, He calls it a light momentary affliction. It's preparing us for eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. We're trying to get out of trouble, and he's trying to put trouble on us. Why? He's trying to mold you in his image. Some of you just want to smart off with your mouth and your words instead of go through the trials and tribulations and know that when the unction comes is when you speak, not when you feel bad. I'm preaching myself today. James 1.5, any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him. Agape, you will become love since you don't understand love. In this process, before you're suddenly, you'll start understanding Agape. Because you will start seeing the the corruption in your own heart and realize that God still loves you. And when that revelation that he still loves you, he still has plans for you, starts literally taking root and giving you the proper identity, you'll start loving others. Faith is sowing the fruits of the Spirit with the gift of faith. And then you wind up with mountain moving power. If I hadn't dealt with my issues with my marriage and my wife, when my oldest son got hooked on crack and I found up, wound up in the throne room of God going, no, not my kid. He wouldn't be successful where he's at today. My youngest one wouldn't be a police officer either. The enemy will attack your bloodline. <laughs> but if you're not willing to deal with your own covenants, you'll forfeit the promises. You know, when God told me to go on that fast, that he was going to talk to Susie, and if she didn't choose him, she's going to be another. I said, okay, how old is she going to be? The Lord's like, like, you can handle a younger one. 
I was exploring my options because it wasn't going good at my house. Oh, I know you're all so perfectly holy, like you didn't have a thought. I'm still preaching to you there, buddy. Let me tell you something. I went back to a prophetic promise that he said I would have money and lots of money to do things with. And I said, why don't I have it now? He said, because if you had that kind of money, you'd be divorced because she would leave you. Well, what do you mean? So she's holding me back. That's what I thought. Come to find out, I had the money issue, not her. She can, she can spend it easily. She has, she has no spirit of poverty on her. He started molding us and shaping us to where he could trust us. It was funny yesterday when my dad came in and he was sitting in his wheelchair and I was taking a break, drinking a soda. She's working around like a crazy woman. She walks by and she goes, now I know how you feel when you're working and I'm sitting around. <laughs> that was a hint. <laughs> <laughs> Rome wasn't built in a day. I wasn't foreman on that job. <laughs> you know. All right, let me close this. I will, you will, we will. God says, I will, he means we will. He will do it in you, through you. He will enable you to do it. God spoke seven I wills to Moses concerning Egypt, children of Israel, and the prophetic promise of Canaan land. Exodus chapter 6, 6 through 8. <clears throat> Say therefore to the people of Israel, I am the Lord. I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptian. I will deliver you from slavery to them. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great acts of judgment. I will take you to be my people. I will be your God, and you shall know that I am the Lord your God, who brought you out from under the burdens of Egypt, I will bring you into the land that I swore to you to give to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. I will give it to you. I am the Lord. Who said I will? The problem is, is we, we, we don't own it. Whether the prophetic terminology is I will, or you will, it always means God's terminology, we will do it together. God's will means I will, I will work supernaturally where it will not work for you in the natural. Here's Gideon, Judges 6, 12-14. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, O mighty man of valor. And Gideon said to him, please, my Lord, if the Lord is with us, did you see what he did there? Why then has all this happened to us? Where are all these wonderful deeds that our fathers can't recounted to us saying, do not the Lord, did, did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has taken, forsaken us and given us into the hands of Midian. And the Lord turned to him and said, go in this might of yours. He didn't say of the tribe or us. Go in this might of yours and save Israel from the hands of the Midians. Do not I send you. You will not believe the prophetic promise of you personally. You will blame us. Or you blame that religious spirit or you blame that prophet you're under it prophesied it or you blame the pastor you're you'll find someone to blame that's not you i get if god would open the articles of heaven i can't i can't imagine how many people have blamed me well if he, if, if he would just hear god and know who i am maybe i did well i'm a prophet really show me where you're going. But the bottom line is he prophesies and he promises you individually. 
And when you figure that out, he'll change you and he'll shape you and he'll mold you that that word has tested you. And then the suddenly start coming. The suddenlies don't turn into pride because you're so humbled that God actually is faithful. And you start recounting the journey and, and the mistakes you made and realize grace was covering you as he was shaping you. Is this is good stuff. Why? There's still hope for me. <laughs> we will do it together. Personal prophecies will always come to pass when prophetic time is properly understood. The person patiently, faithfully, and with wisdom waits for God's timing and his processes until the fulfillment of time and the maturity has come. Every word will come to pass in God's purpose and according to his prophetic promise to you personally. He will, I will, yes, we will fulfill it only in and by and through the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. What promises have you laid down? What promises and prophetic words do you believe you've disqualified? You may find that he hasn't disqualified you. I want to tell you that the prophecy Susie got in 1994 has come true. She carries one of the most interesting and partable gifts of faith I've ever seen. We joke, she says, it took faith to live with you. But she didn't have faith in me, she had faith in him. Which means that's a lot of faith that she knew God was promising her things about me that she couldn't control. Only me and God could. Thank you for tuning in to today's message from Identity Church. To know more about us, go to IdentityChurch.net, where you'll find resources such as a calendar, media, and upcoming events. You can also download an app for your mobile device from the Apple App Store or Google Play. Then from your mobile device, you can hear our messages, Read the Bible, take notes, connect with us on social media, and even pay your tithe. Again, thank you for joining into Identity Sunday Morning Message, where sonship is revealed. Have a blessed day.